In the world's smallest venue for professional wrestling, Ichigaya Chocolate Square, a morsel of chocolate is a priceless reward for blood, sweat, and tears. In this room, the warriors of Gato Move compete for a worldwide audience, not just for money or fame. And it made a tweet saying like Chocopo is the most brutal promotion in the world. But for a morsel of pride. Chocopo! Wrestling club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to WFMU's Wrestling Club, the only space that's safe for all wrestling fans, whether you're casual, lapsed, obsessed, or ashamed. I'm Darren Maybe, broadcasting from the belly of the beast here in Jersey City, New Jersey, where tonight we have an excellent episode of the podcast planned for you. We're going to be talking all the news and pro wrestling. We're going to be talking, uh, we got a light side of the ring for you. We have a couple big show and tells. It's going to be a great show. So please uh, stick around, but let me introduce you to my tag team partner. Coming to us live via satellite from Hollywood, California, the Squire David to my Lord Stephen. Brett Davis. Brett! Oh, hello, Darren. Uh, sadly, we, we don't have the, uh, the Earl Robert with us. The man upstairs, Isaiah. Um, oh, wow. He drew the he drew the uh, short end of that straw, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I, I, Eaton, think... I love Bobby, but Earl Robert... Ooh. I mean, would you rather be Earl Robert or Sir William? I think, you know... I'll take, uh, you know, you got to be Squire David. I took Lord Stephen for myself because I'm an egomaniac and a control freak. Mm -hmm. Uh, But also Lord Stephen's real name is Darren. Darren Matthews. So we even have the same initials. That's right. And, uh, you know, know, it's Regal's in the the news this week. He is. He is. Uh, Regal's going to be entering into a power sharing agreement. With uh, everybody's favorite, Samoa Joe on NXT. And uh, Samoa Joe's back in uh, the WWE fold as uh, an authority figure of sorts on NXT. Brett, what do you th- what do you think? We love Samoa Joe. Yeah. I mean, uh, if this is what he wants, he gets to make that money. NXT seems like a million times more of a man- manageable situation than touring main roster Vince McMahon WWE. You know. When has Samoa Joe in his career ever gotten what he wanted? You know That's what I true. mean? Like, think about, I was thinking today, when WCW went out of business, who was the single wrestler to suffer the most in the wake of that? It's Samoa Joe. Think about that. If WWE had real competition, if, you know, if uh, Tony Khan, when he was 14, was like, Dad, give me some money, you know, in 2005, Samoa Joe would have been the top wrestler in the United States. I mean, AEW is great. They don't have anyone on their roster as believably badass as Samoa Joe, in my opinion. That's also back then was, you know, under 30 and just like the best guy in the world. So, you know, always happy for Joe to, you know, pop up somewhere, but it's always a little bittersweet because, you know, we're seeing Joe in a suit. Joe gets to uh, talk. He's a great talker. But I want to see Joe and Pete Dunn. I want to see Joe and Walter. But wow. it doesn't look like we're getting that. You don't want to yeah, see Joe might, and Walter? Yeah, I, I, I might disagree with you. I don't think Samoa Joe would have been the WCW champion in 2005, necessarily. No, but... some. I, see, I disagree with... Like, in 2005, 2006, 2007, mid-2000s, Samoa Joe, in my opinion, was the most... Um, marketable pro wrestler hear me out because you know ufc is really big at that time and he's got that style that you know the post all japan heavyweight style 
He's believable. He's a great talker. TNA's biggest buy rates were with Samoa Joe against Kurt Angle, not, you know, Jeff Jarrett, not Ravens rules matches, not Abyss, you know, not Hulk Hogan. It was Samoa Joe. Like he was un, he's just un, he was untapped at that point, I think, to, as, you know, to be a big star. And, uh, yeah, you know, but I, I think there was, there's something to toiling in obscurity. I think by 2007, he should have been a bigger star than he was. But, you know, there you've seen 2001. He would have been. Samoa Joe. Well, yeah, you know, I understand he needs, that. He needs those, what like, I'm saying, Kobashi if, matches and, and stuff like that, oh, you know. If he had, if Samoa Joe had, if T, okay, if TNA was, like, a real company, not just a joke, he would have been the biggest star in wrestling at the turn of the last decade, in my opinion. Just mm-hmm. because, you know, it was about MMA. It was about being believable. It was about, you know, wrestling hard. And he was, like, so ingrained in that style, and it was just, there was no viable outlet for it in the United States in, at his, uh, in his prime. But I guess we get to watch him on NXT, so. You know, he never, uh, he never had the match with his, uh, he trained at the same time as Christopher Daniels, and he wrestled him a bunch. But he also trained at the same time as the prototype. How dare you? Smelly. Mock. An engineered genius like the prototype. I look in your genetic lunchbox and find a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with the crust cut off. Whoa. And they never Whoa. had a match. The prototype, a.k.a. John Cena. Um, That's right. Being a robot. Chinese-American superstar John Cena. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, good, good for him. It's cool to see him, you know, beating people up again. It's good for NXT because they need new faces. That show is so stale. The new faces they have are... They run the spectrum from underwhelming to creepy. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see Joe there. And it's a role he really hasn't done. He hasn't had that authority figure role before. You don't Uh, like babyface Dexter Loomis? Why? Why Why would I like him? Okay. All right. Hey there. He hugs Poppy. (laughs) <laughs> so, I, so did uh so did the boss so did yeah. paul uh congratulations again to triple h and poppy on their third year uh of of i wedding can't bliss. Be- i can't believe that St- that uh stephanie has really embraced the concept of a thruple is that what it's called <laughs> i read about that online i'm not we don't have those kind of designations in jersey city brett here in hollywood we're we're almost uh Entirely thruples. Yeah, it's kind of like you're reproduced by, like, spores. It's just kind of in the air. Yeah. I mean, now the city's reopening. I've been doing a lot more Hollywood stuff. I went to a magic-themed bar that Fred Durst has a jazz night at. (laughs) Oh, wow. Great. I went to a carousel-themed nightclub. I went to a uh, Star Wars cantina. Brett, why are you only doing tourist activities? You and lived then, in LA for almost two I, years. I went. I've only lived here for less than a year, and uh, I went to really? Universal Studios Hollywood, where I took the studio tour. And guess who I saw? Who? Elizabeth Berkley, shooting uh, the Saved by the Bell reboot. Is that going to be a crossover with Showgirls? Is she going to be reprising that character, but in the Saved by the Bell universe? Uh, kind of like a no, kind of like a new substitute coming they, in. It's uh, it's if Saved by the Bell had Thirty Rock jokes, or, or the Thirty Rock joke format minus the Thirty Rock joke quality. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds great. Yeah. Did you audition? I did not get offered. Um, no, I'm sorry. I'd love to. I'd love to be like Belding's son. You know, it's, I know, you know, you, but you know, it's Hollywood, Brett, you got to buy your way in and I hear you're making investments. That's true. Um, but, uh, before we get into that, I just, am I need, jumping ahead? Am I jumping ahead? You're jumping ahead just a little bit because I want to call an audible and talk about this, this, uh, photo, uh, that I've been obsessed with for years. <laughs> it's, uh, Action Bronson. Dave okay. Batista, 
and Mr. Belding. With strippers at best. Oh, a, gu- a gun. I see There's a, a line. gun. I see a gun. Uh, a, a pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> but like a personal pizza box. Yeah, well. I don't know who these other dudes are. I don't know who these women are, but again, one can deduce from the way that they're dressed in the hotel room setting uh, what's going on. But yeah, I don't. It is wrestling related because it's Dave Batista, but Mr. Belding being there is so well, weird. And he's so sweaty. Well, Mr. Belding is good friends with uh, with Vicky. I remember they. I remember uh, you know they're Facebook friends. I remember they used to talk about uh, their uh, their Christianity together and they'd pray together. I so love uh, I I did. I am an investor now. That's good. Yeah, I want to. I want to hear about this. What's the uh, stock price right now? The crypto price. Let me look it up. Yeah, uh, I I think I. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how to find it. <laughs> okay, oh no, yeah. Brett, you got to stop making investments. Why don't you tell the people about it? Yeah, so um, uh, th- this uh, crypto that I've invested in uh, is uh, dollar sign MJF. It's MJF's new cryptocurrency um, on Rally. I don't know anything about crypto. Uh, no, but... no. And you're notoriously deeply in debt. <laughs> yes. So this is a very, this is a dangerous move for you. I mean, it I could be great. A... Yeah, I had to take a personal loan for this. Um <laughs> Because uh, again, I am in the red. Pretty much, it's up. We're yeah. up uh, eight eight point seven three percent. I don't know what that means. I know that I paid twenty dollars, and now I have thirty eight dollars. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh man, I needed to get in. I need yeah. to get in on the ground floor. So you know, you could you could check in next week, see where I'm at. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get out of the red. Who knows? With my MJF <laughs> coin. This could be it. This could be it. <laughs> oh, yeah, to stay tuned for that. I can't wait for Brett's, you know, his millions. I mean, talk about a million dollar man. Yeah. This is really I, the this is the key. What if I become a crypto guy? I'm, I'll be like Cameron Grimes. But like sleazier. Me. I'll start saying that. Yeah. It'll be charming. You get Vir- Virgil starts calling you again. Yeah. You know, it's telling. It's very telling about Virgil. <laughs> Virgil would fit in this storyline between Cameron Grimes and L.A. Knight and Ted DiBiase so easily. You know, become the million dollar sure. champion. Get Virgil. That's what they did with Ted DiBiase Jr., they didn't call Virgil for this. <laughs> I wonder why. I mean, they, why do you think that is? I don't know. Maybe he's like, I'll pull my dick out the way yeah, he was when he bucks. was on the special. Yeah, the only time I've ever been alone in a room with Virgil, he, uh, well, he solicited me. <laughs> Which is fine. I stand by. Allegedly solicited me. I don't want to accuse him of anything. I'm, okay. It definitely happened. <laughs> it's hard to say allegedly when you're talking about a personal experience. Well, you don't know the law, Brett. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for not canceling Virgil so future generations can enjoy. Uh, That's right. Yeah, but uh, NXT, what, what, how do you feel about this uh, this Ted DiBiase story? We've seen a lot of Cameron Grimes, who I'm maybe starting to come around on, but I still Cameron. Don't. Okay, Cameron Grimes has the um, CJ Parker NXT vibe to me, where... The gimmick is cool, or, not, or the gimmick is contemporary, but the guy portraying it doesn't really match. Even though, like, C.J. Parker had the dread, so he did look like a dumb, like, fish head, um, he still was, there's just something about him that, you know, is just kind of a turnoff, <laughs> I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. But it's the same thing with Cameron Grimes, where he he doesn't look like a rich guy. He doesn't look like the gimmick. And Well, I mean, that's the know, joke. Yeah, but it's not that funny. It's not yeah, that funny. I, yeah, that's that's maybe the, the underlying problem, is I haven't enjoyed this character at all. It's a little more enjoyable now that it's like, you know, the Beverly Hillbilly thing, but it's still, you know... But it's not even that. And like, he's good really at do Beverly... portraying the character. It's just like, 
like like that it's just grating he reminds me of the guy like the wrestlelicious uh man <laughs> wrestlelicious <laughs> guy where he's just like he seems like he's pretending to be something i don't know i'm not i mean i'm very cold on nxt i have been for the duration of the pandemic so cameron grimes isn't bringing me isn't knocking it out of the park for me and you, not, you know nothing well do you NXT like really do you is. like la Knight? then because he's a more believable rich guy yeah but he's also like a generic wrestler yeah <laughs> you know like is there anyone more generic than la Knight? like he could have been the same exact wrestler in ovw the same exact wrestler in tna he was the same wrestler in tna nwa whatever like go all the way back it's just you know he's got a body He's got short hair. He's got the tan. He's kind it's of Mr. A dick. It's, it's Mr. Anderson, Mr. Kennedy. You know. There you go. There, you, same. The, it's the perfect comparison. And I don't know. Never a big Mr. Kennedy fan. Didn't really get it. Guess like the intro microphone. thing. That was fun. The the image of it is great, but it ain't really in a much of a gimmick. I don't know. Also, anytime I hear uh, the name L.A. Knight, I think of that City Pop song. Just get in That would be great if he had like a, like a, like a, oh, who's a, who's a guy in New Japan that's like a, he's like a playboy. If LA Knight had like a Yujiro Takahashi gimmick, you know, where he's just like out on the town with a bunch of, you know, partying with all the women and stuff like that would be great. You know, those kind of characters need the bells and whistles. They need the dog and pony show. They need the whole attraction around them. Because without it, you're just kind of a... Well, Takahashi... Looks like he's... He's he's more, you know... I think his idea of fun is a little less PG than would fit on <laughs> WWE Pro. Well, that's fine. Yeah, but you could, like... But, like, even showing Yo, like, they're going out and hanging out. And was it Rocky Romero in a tag team that was like that, too, where they were just, like... The re- oh, Rapungi Vice, yeah. that's who I'm thinking The recently of. reunited Rapungi yeah. Vice. And right, there you go. Um, but, there's... Yeah, L.A. Knight. Is that what people in L.A. look like? Is that the thing? Is he's, like, from L.A.? Like, he's... He doesn't seem like he's from L.A. There's an L.A. thing, and he's not it. He's, like, the coolest guy in maybe Cleveland means, like, lo- or something. Like, L.A., like... Like, maybe means, like, L.A., Louisiana. <laughs> like, Baton Rouge. <laughs> maybe that's... They need to designate that. <laughs> yeah, little asterisk, yeah. Now, if, if we want to do a city pop gimmick, there is Jiro. Uh, uh, his name, oh, what is his name? Uh, the Ikiman Jiro, uh, which is like a Japanese fancy boy, kind of, I think is like what, what, is, what his deal is. He's on oh. 205 Live. There he is. He wrestles in a watermelon uh, tuxedo, or watermelon suit. Who's that other... Who's that other this person? This guy's been in the WWE for, Wait. like, six years. Who are these people? I've never seen either one. Is that Tony, Tony Nese? Nice? Wow. He's wrestled at he WrestleMania. He still wrestles? Which one? Like, WrestleMania Backlash? He wrestled in a singles match. <laughs> WrestleMania Kickoff Show. WrestleMania <laughs> Access? It was, it was WrestleMania Kickoff. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Good for him. But he's been in WWE for... For years. Oh, years. 205 Live has been on television for like seven years. Kota Ibushi was going to be on 205 Live. Could you imagine? Oh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Kota Ibushi on uh, wrestling, uh, God, who wrestling that guy, Watermelon. Dude. Ikimanjiro. And Tony Nese. Tony Ikimanjiro, I, I just need a little more and he can become an official wrestling club star. Uh, you know, like... Uh, you know, Maki right. and Lanny and and our little Motley Lanny crew. Yeah, I love that group. Judy. Yeah, I love that group. 
Judy. And, uh, oh, uh, Gokik and Death. I, I heard there was some uh, drama with Gokik and Death last night at the Stardom show. You mean Fukigan Sorry, Death. Sorry, and Death. Grumpy well, Death. I did watch the Stardom... I did watch the Stardom pay-per-view. I have to say... I have to echo everyone's sentiments about it. What an amazing show. Great show. Gonna watch every big show now. I've said I was, and I've fallen off, but... They have the English commentary, which isn't the best, but it's a Scottish guy whose name I can't remember and a British guy whose name I can't remember. Maybe they're both Scottish, but they both talk quietly, so it kind of gives stardom like a 70s world of sport vibe, Mm -hmm. almost, which I like. Um, But Fukigan Death was in a... Let me pull up this card. You know, I like a quiet announcer. I, I recently went to a... Again... Hollywood's opening up. LA's opening up. I'm seeing a lot of the world. I went to a spa, and I, I sat in a Ooh. sauna and watched uh, Korean golf, Ooh. and it's the most pleasant thing you'll ever see. That sounds really it's, nice. It's it's yeah. so quiet, especially now. There's like no crowds or anything, so it's just you're watching people golf. There's drones that film them, and then when they like walk to the next course, they just play like Disney <laughs> Disney princess music. I mean, th- there was like a like a, on the in the quieter moments of the show, like it was nice to have these like very uh, pleasant sounding announcers. Uh, but then, in, like the main event, it's like a a forty five second slap. It was like fry Takayama for like two minutes, and it wasn't very relaxing. Then that was an amazing match. The main event, Utami Hayashita against Shuri. They did the double knockout finish. It was a 30-minute time limit draw, and then they were like, no, we want to keep going, so they added another 30 minutes, and it was an amazing finish. Stardom is so good because... And we'll go back to Fugig and Death in a minute, but their, sh- like, their booking is so creative and not in a way that makes you... like. I feel like creative booking in wrestling is like Vince Russo booking, you know what I mean? And it, where it's just, it never works. So it's like, oh, we'll just do what works, you know? Just, like, very conservative booking. Like, New Japan, to me, is very conservative booking. But this show had a, a couple storyline matches. And one was the uh, goth heel group Odotai. Odeotai. Against the... Odeotai. Uh, against Stars, the uh, babyface group with Mayu Yutani and Starlight Kid. And they had this match, and whoever, it was an elimination match. It was a five-person, a ten-man tag elimination match. And whoever lost the final fall for their team had to join the new team. So the Stars was trying to win back Fukigan Death. You know what I mean? They're trying to rescue her from these evil goth drones. Because she people. started smoking, and she's, she's developing a bad attitude. She's <laughs> Yeah, she's a very bad attitude. You still hear, like, uh, faint cries of death in the background. Like, you don't see her all the time, but she'll be out on the floor just kind of yelling. Um, but unfortunately, Odatai won the match, and they beat Starlight Kid. So they abducted Starlight Kid. Uh, Natsuko Tora, who is their... She's got the most Dump Matsumoto charisma I've ever seen in my life. Like, she's such a copy of her, which is I think is great. A lot of people don't like uh, Tora, but, I mean, I'm into it. I love, you know, cyber goth wrestlers. I think that's fun. So they kidnap Starlight Kid. Uh-oh. Starlight, Starlight Kid's great. Everybody was great. Every match was good. They crowned a Cinderella champion. Uh, Saya Katam... Uh, Kamatani, Saya Kamatani, have you heard her? Have you seen her? She's like a high flyer. A lot of charisma. She won the Cinderella tournament, so she got to put on a nice dress and put on the tiara and come out and wave to everybody. That was like the the closing of the show. Uh, That was like a big single elimination tournament. And there was a three-way tag match with uh, Julia and uh, Julia and her group. uh, What's it? Donna Del Mondo, Mm -hmm. right? Is that right? And uh, I forget who the other two groups were, but they, but this is an example of like creative booking because Julia was like, I want to have 
it's a three-way match with three different teams from three different factions. And we're going to draw straws and like do like almost an old-school WCW lethal lottery gimmick where they just mix up the tag teams. And usually, like imagine if that was on Raw. It would be so bad. But this worked in a lot of... I don't know. This was really creative and it worked really well. I recommend everybody watch this pay-per-view. It's great. And the main event was unreal. It, oh, my God. <laughs> Did you watch the, any of this show, Brett? Did you, you watch know, the main event? I've been so busy this week, I, I haven't gotten around to it. But I definitely will check it out. Oh, you have to watch the main event. I know everybody's been talking about it, but it's worth it. Shuri is like a mixed... It's like... Split the difference between Akira Hogato and Kenta. Just like scary person, scary fighter, really devastating kicks, submissions. And then Utami, she's like the like the perfect babyface champion. Think Tanahashi, Ricky Steamboat, Bret Hart. And they have this 45 minute match that ends in with such a great finish that it, they just both die. There was so much crying on the show. Starlight Kid was crying. Shuri was crying because she was trying to win it for her, trying to win the title for a recently deceased mother. So it was a great show. Everybody should be watching Stardom. I think it's the best. The Red Belt, the World of Stardom title, is the top wrestling title today, I think. It's great. So everybody should watch it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, they just had a, a, a TJPW show. Uh, with um right uh, you know that dare i say it now she's an official member of wrestling club she doesn't even need to be Wait. part of our uh part part of our you know weird crop of you know weirdos we <laughs> support uh but may saruga yeah. uh in her may saint michelle uh gimmick uh teamed up uh against maki ito oh she teamed up with saki sama of neo bishiki gun um, to take okay. on uh, Miyu Yamashita, who just stood tall as, you know, uh, amongst the, the men's world champions at Cyber Fight, and Maki Ito, uh, who, again, Maki, uh, all for stands. But it won't stand forever. And when it's rescinded, you know it's going to be controversial. But, uh, yeah, big, yeah, big, right, uh, big victory with May St. Michelle and Sakasama uh, coming out victorious. So. I, I also want to say just one more thing about the Stardom show. I have a new favorite yes. wrestler in Stardom. Uh, Himeka. She's, uh, she's part of, uh, I believe she's part of Queen's Quest. Or maybe she's part of Donald DeMondo. I kind of, I'm still getting used to all the factions. But she's a young wrestler. Uh, I think she's 22 or 23. And her nickname is Jumbo Princess after her favorite wrestler, Jumbo Shruta. Which... Brett, what's the American equivalent of that? <laughs> a 22-year-old uh, young uh, female wrestler. I guess, gosh, like <laughs> if uh, <laughs> if a Ty Conti's favorite wrestler is yeah, Ty t- t- Ty started calling her Ty Bam Bam Conti because she loved Terry Gordy. <laughs> 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 Uh, but she lost, and I'm going to guess it's because, one, she didn't do the big knee. Mm-hmm. Like, your Jumbo's your favorite wrestler, and I throw a big knee. And two, I didn't see the arm yeah. go up. So I don't think she had that energy going, but, you know, she is my Jumbo princess. So I uh, am looking forward to her. I mean, she did pretty good. She got to the semifinals in the Cinderella tournament, but we'll have to wait and see how things shake out for her. I mean, glad she chose that nickname. Because it would, it might be offensive if uh, somebody named her that, like a like an old man. She <laughs> about uh, Dewdrop. Dewdrop would be a really stupid name for uh, an adult that's not a troll. <laughs> um, what's a what's a Dewdrop? A, I mean, a, a drop of dew. <laughs> you know, it's so like something that would maybe fall <laughs> off a leaf <laughs> on a. Uh... I think that's very calming. That's nice. Maybe that, you know, maybe that wrestler could be in, like, the Seidel Brothers yoga gimmick. You, you know, know, something very new age. If that is the thing, then, yeah, great. However, <laughs> Dewdrop is, uh, or we don't know if that's her name officially. We know that's the bandied about name. But, uh, yeah, uh, Piper Niven, a.k.a. Viper, debuted on the WWE main roster as the, 
overbearing, heavy friend of a hot girl, which WWE loves to do. It's it's so obnoxious and cliche, and she deserves so much better. She debuted with the debuting Eva Marie, who's built up, you know, through vignettes for the past few weeks, like, uh, I'm, I'm training to be a wrestler, get ready. It's like... You know, you saw these and it's either going to be like the bait and switch or it's going to be like they're actually going to treat her seriously and both are bad because we've seen it before and it's, you know, I don't know. Jeez, Brett, you're not a big Eva Marie no, fan, are you? you know, and it's like, look, you know? if, if a wrestler is going to be hot, I'm fine with that. I'm attracted to women. That's fine. Don't, Whoa, don't give Brett. me... Don't give it me all this Pride extra Month. shit, though. And then, like, I don't know. Drag down somebody I actually do yeah, like. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, it's wrestling, okay? Like, yeah, hot is good for, if whatever, if you're casting people, you want hot people. It's wrestling. Wrestling hot is a level below real hot, you know what I mean? So it shouldn't really matter that much. Uh, and, I don't know, Eva Marie just has she doesn't really have any charisma yeah. like you got to have something it's not about being hot doesn't really doesn't really matter it's 2021 be it, everybody's nobody's yeah. hot anymore you know what i mean like there's no hotties anymore especially there are no hot people that look that like you know have eva marie's uh style yeah you know, she's that, fit like, but you know so is so is a million other wrestlers you know like why do you need this one she, who was Loudly rejected by the fan base, uh, and and be- that became her gimmick, was that she was this unlikable well, person that nobody wanted to see. <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a, a new initiative of uh, people power. Mm-hmm. Big Johnny is is back and in control. Even, Big Johnny, that's right, Johnny Ace. You know, and he loves his diva search catalogs. He does. You know, and I it feel like his life. I feel like Johnny Ace has that uh, energy where he's still getting Sears catalogs in 2021. He's still got the big paper catalog, and he's thumbing through it to look for his latest, uh, you know, princess. <sighs> yeah. Well, we love you, Piper Divin. Don't. I mean, I just want to say this. I just want to say this. The Stardom show was three hours long, and Raw is three hours long. If you're watching Raw and not watching Stardom, you do it to yourself. That's yep. all I got to say. Absolutely. Uh, she looked great in the ring, though. She wrestled uh, Naomi, I think. I don't remember. Either way, no, that's I mean, that's telling, too. Naomi deserves much better as well, but that's a, another thing we've already complained about. Um, but, yeah, uh, she's uh, great. Uh, but I hope this isn't a doomsday booking for her. Do drop. Do drop. Real bad. Um, uh, d- speaking of NXT, uh, the the in your house pay per view was this weekend. Uh, did you get to get to check this one out? <laughs> I only saw gifts of Todd Pentengill. <laughs> uh, what's going on with him? Well, he was back. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. We look back at Todd Bettengill and say, man, was this guy annoying? But then, when he comes on modern-day WWE, he's kind of like a breath of fresh air. He, <laughs> you well, know. you know, PLJ folded, so I feel like he ain't got much yeah. going on. You might as well go down to Orlando. He's got the worst chin situation, uh, chin hair situation I've ever seen. Is he... Okay, let's... On the scale from, like, zero to Tony Schiavone, where is he? You know, I think the the chin thing is so bad that he looks worse than Tony Schiavone. But if he shaved it, <gasps> it would be a very different story. Uh, poor yeah. Tony. But he was just like being He's goofy little... Todd Pettengill. There's also uh, the return of handsome Doc Hendricks. Uh, <laughs> which was rough. <laughs> Did he have a wig on? Did he have the wig uh, on? You mean his hair? I don't know. Is that his hair? Wait, you hold on. Doc Hendricks, you're telling me that wasn't a wig? <laughs> well, well, Doc, in the 90s, I don't think Doc Hendricks wore a wig. That wasn't a wig? 
I don't believe. Yeah, it. I mean, he, he didn't have a strange haircut in, in the late, in the early, or mid to late nineties. Oh yeah, he had that great Doc Hedrick's haircut. Yeah, it's not strange. Like compared to his eighties hair, his, it was a little more. Well, and compared to his hair or now, his like two thousand sixteen yeah. hair, flowing, flowing like an angel. Yeah, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't call that flowing hair. It looks like hay a little bit. <laughs> like if you dress the scarecrow it's up like Georgia. a pimp. This Saturday we had Against All Odds. <laughs> Aaron, did you see Against All Odds? What's Against All well, Odds? Well, it was the newest uh, <laughs> uh, big event from Impact Wrestling. Who's? Oh, that's, it, why, that's why I didn't Slowly know. growing to uh, AEW uh, because the main event was from Daly's Place with Tony Schiavone on commentary. Um, cool. Well, let me guess. Was it like Moose? It was Moose. Yeah. Really? Oh, cool. Was, uh, let's see, was uh, Joseph Park in no, it? he's in WWE. Yeah, he was on, on camera with AJ Styles for a minute. As his <laughs> statistician. <laughs> and then he was replaced by Omos. <laughs> Oh, that's probably. I guess that's. I don't. Is. I don't know. How is against all odds? How is against all odds, Brett? Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, the the. Sammy Callahan uh, came in. The big Sammy Callahan return. Yeah. Boy, can't wait to see him on AEW. Dark. Well, he he didn't return. Uh, oh. They, they did a, an angle where he drove from. Where do they film? In fact, Georgia. Yes. Yeah, so, no. Or yeah, Nashville. Yeah, he somehow made it from from Nashville, Jacksonville, uh, before the show ended. So he interfered in the main event in Daly's place. Uh, tried to kill Kenny Omega or something. Don Callis fired him. We also had interference from Generation Me, That's Max and funny. Jeremy Buck. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, if they just like legitimately changed their names to Generation V, it'd be so great. Yeah, I I, I, honestly, they should just they should only speak. They should only be called Generation V on Impact, and it should never be addressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. But God, Sammy Callahan is my least favorite wrestler. Why? He's got that voice. He's kind of like. He looks like if Luna and Bam Bam had a <laughs> shitty kid. Yeah. Like a kid that they were, were like, that kid, like, I don't, that kid screwed yeah. up. They sent him down <laughs> south. <laughs> Luna left him at a truck stop somewhere. Yeah, he had, Put him right in, the to- right in the toilet from whence he He was came. dressed up a little bit. He wore his black vest. Oh, cool. Just, you have, like, chains on yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's just like that scumbag look is my least favorite, like, wrestling thing. There's so many of them, and they're all in Impact. GCW's got some, some too. Yeah, but they're at least, like, yeah. local. You know what I mean? Like, GCW's allowed to have a bunch of scumbags. I mean, Nick Gage is a scumbag, but, like, Sammy Callahan is playing scumbag. Like, Sammy Callahan doesn't have to be a scumbag. He's just someone who played video games too much. Nick Gage did the shit in ri- video games. He did that yeah. in real life. Yeah. So, like, he's allowed to be a scumbag. He earned it. Sammy Callahan, that's unearned. He's an unearned scumbag. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean he, he, he's been around for a while. It's just, like, it's it's not for me. Long time. That's all I'll say. A decade. And the fact that, is he going to be feuding with Kenny Omega? Like, thank God that, thank God yeah, AEW no never t- tells us what's going on in Impact. Like, you had no idea Kenny Omega... The AEW champion was facing they Moose can't... in a huge match. Look, I mean, it is a one-way relationship. You know, we're not going to see Tommy Dreamer, you know, in the uh, in Daly's place. Maybe we will. I guess they're doing things in Daly's place now. But there were, like, no fans yeah. there. It wasn't an AEW. But they had all their, their, uh, their trainees at ringside. And they, they had the arena set up weird, so they were just wrestling in front of, like, a black wall. Which was not a great look. Um, <laughs> no. I guess it's better than the Impact Yeah, zone. I mean, a hundred times. Uh, I guess they could start welcoming... I, or I think they announced they're welcoming fans back. Which I think I'll need 
to watch that to give a proper evaluation of my general opinion of wow. impact. That's how we know. That's how we know the pandemic is coming to an end. We can go back to the mm-hmm. impact zone. Vaxxed or not. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that that's our, our news. Uh, I think it's time to jump into our next segment. Uh, well, until. That's right. We, we both picked uh, clips. I think we're a little familiar with each of them, but it's been a while since either of us have seen them. You know, we've been sitting on these for, for a little while. Yeah, these are a little little odds and ends we're mm-hmm. doing tonight. So, um, yeah, let's. Brett, should yeah, I go uh, first? Yeah, you should go first. Uh, d- do we need setup for this clip? You know, I I don't really know much about it to be honest with you, but I uh, I enjoy the uh, musical uh, aspect of this vignette. Okay. So, here's one from the genius, Lanny Poffo. Since there were no cameras allowed in the courtroom, the genius will give you his word. I felt I was too smart to hire a lawyer. That's why I'm as free as a bird. I spent seven days in a musty old prison, incredibly dank and austere. I told the Shakespearean groupies, I'm sorry, pretending that I was sincere. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I'm proud of the things I have done. Now poets and playwrights, both dead and alive, know that genius is still number one. When you're a genius, life can be grand. You comprehend, you understand. Till Shakespeare is laid to rest. I am the genius. I am the best. No, I think that was an original song by uh, Martin Rev from Suicide. <laughs> I think so. Oh my I god! Think so. I mean, Larry right, did real so good at that lower this east is, side. This is. Where did this air? What are they promoting? I don't here? think this aired anywhere. <laughs> I don't think it aired anywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, this is a. Uh, the, 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 this is the second time we've seen Lanny Poffo canoeing. <laughs> I love the ca- the canoeing yeah. is great. The the video editing, the the effects, Brett. I mean, you're a video guy. Talk about. <sighs> you know, it's 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 just like the the star wipe thing. You know, he really enjoyed, <laughs> but it, it was the star wipe. But he was the star <laughs> in doing his little uh, gymnastics there. Uh, seemed like he had a good yeah. day. You know, again, the last time we saw Lanny in a canoe, he was uh, being creepy to a teenage girl. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I think this one was less creepy. A little less creepy. Well... <laughs> I'm going to give this no setup, uh, besides that it's the trailer for Salunatics. <laughs> well, I like the alliterations. You know, I'm down with the with the soundtrack so far. I like those horns. Mm-hmm. Uh, We're I'm both from it. New Jersey, so we've had maybe a little bit more of uh, the Frankie Valley vibe than you know other people. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I like it so far, but uh, yeah, let's yeah. let's keep watching and uh, keep an eye out for a fun cameo. Wow, <laughs> Darren, what, what 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 do you what, just need to stop again? <laughs> what do you think so far? Well, it seems like one of the uh, fellows has had a had a long lunch or something. Uh, I, yeah, can't didn't really see what was going on. <laughs> Just needed to get your feedback on <laughs> how this trailer starts. The first, well, it's you know it, they set a mood and then they uh, 
<laughs> you know, the kind of uh, yeah. Break. I, we're talking about editing. It's a wonderful editing, depending on what they're going for. But let's uh, let's go back to some lunatics. Something must have gone up in the <laughs> what, what do you expect? I'm fighting colon cancer, fighting throat cancer. Bones, you don't have to do this. Oh, man, I'll get the bread, baby. bones. Oh, no. Okay, so hold on. So, right there we had, you know, WWF champion for a half a century, Bruno San Martino, in uh, acting. He's in a role there where he's uh, portraying a uh, mob boss, it seems. I don't know if he's a... Uh, I mean, <laughs> who knows? He's a mobster. He's a mobster. Yeah, mob boss in the more uh, Tony Soprano uh, dress than the... Sure. I mean, Good this is obviously dress. inspired by, this is very much inspired by Sopranos, you've got to say. Uh, and it's, he had, uh, he's been dealing with some colon issues, it seems like. So that, so they start out, their big star in the movie, in the very, right in the trailer, second shot of the trailer, he farts. He's got a farting. So Bruno San Martino has farted. He's also using a voice box. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> I didn't even touch the voice Let's go box. back. <laughs> what, what's going on? I blackmailed you into a date. Then I spoil it by getting myself stomped. Well, so far we're both losers. Maybe if we stick together, we can be winners. We got the thief. We took him out to the woods. We slit his throat, poured gasoline all over him, then lit him up and watched him go up into a ball of fun. Bruno. You know, Bruno said he'd never turn heel. Can I say, well, there's a reason why, I guess. <laughs> Not everybody's cut out to be a heel. <laughs> That's the thing, when you're like a nice guy, they're like, okay, be a heel. You're a, it's just like graphically horrible. Uh, I haven't called off. I want to go back to that. Fire. Yeah, do you think if Bruno turned heel in like... 72, he would have set Ivan Koloff on fire. <laughs> Pedro? Yeah. There's, there's, there's only one WWF champion here. <laughs> I mean, I had the idea a long time ago that if Andre the Giant couldn't wrestle at WrestleMania 3, it should have been Hogan and Bruno turn Bruno heel. <laughs> <laughs> Does, who's Hogan's friend in 1987? Like, who's his, like, Undercard the junkyard friend. dog. Junkyard dog says junkyard dog on fire. Burns up. <laughs> Let's go back. <laughs> I've got more talent in my one finger than that guy flat got in his whole stinking body. You know what? I think it takes talent to make money, and rich men don't have to prance around on a stage like a teenager to feed their egos. I got six days to come up with a triple payment. I have no idea where I'm going to get that at, man. What about a bank? Man, don't do that, man. You're being a little too serious. You're starting to scare me. I need to commit this one little crime. And I'm never going to do it again. But I can't take it anymore, Pop. I need to jump. I'm going to make you was that Arnold? Was that Arnold Skolin? <laughs> no. The, the golden boy? I don't think that was the golden boy. <laughs> oh. I'm, uh, you know, the, the name of this is um, Salunatics Movie Preview with Chuck Corby. I'm going to guess this dude that we're seeing a lot of is Chuck Corby. Can any more pop? I need a jump start. I'm just going to do this one time, and I'm going to make you prouder than you've ever been. I'm going to make you really proud of me, Bob. You'll see. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? I'm getting it. Give me a couple of minutes here, will you? Whoa. Hey, shut up! They're gonna get us caught, you big dumb. Oh. Shut up! Oh, no, no. Shut up! 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 Shut up!
catch the guns no, and the cops. No, no, no. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the audacity for Bruno Sabertino to be like, you know, Vince McMahon and his Kiss My Butt Club. <laughs> why, he's, why he's setting people on fire and beating women. Middle Farting. Women. Farting. <laughs> Fetch the guns and the car. You hear me? Yeah. Because before I bite the dust, I'm going to show everybody that I can still handle my own problems. Let's just kiss and say goodbye. Well, take down that address. We gotta try to get <laughs> Yeah, it I'm definitely. <laughs> God. I'm definitely call. Should we call this number now? Studio Twenty Entertainment. Yeah, call okay. it. Yeah, call it. Yep. Yep. Call All it. right. Maybe I can yeah. call it. Yeah, I, I got it. Four one two. I encourage everyone to call it. Um, I got to get a full copy of this. This is in Pittsburgh, so I think we know the Bruno connection. Hello? Hi, uh, is this Studio 20 Entertainment? This is uh, Marcus Square Productions. Oh, okay. Um, do you distribute old Studio 20 Entertainment clips or, or, or DVDs? No, uh, what are you looking for? Uh, exactly. I'm about half loaded. I'm in the bar. Oh. Um, I'm looking for a, a movie called Salunatics. Yeah, well, that's a movie that I made. Oh, okay, I mean, great. It's available on Amazon. Oh, okay. Under, under the new title... Bob Boss and the Soul Singer. Okay, great. What do you want to do? Just buy one? Yeah, I just wanted to buy one, but if it's on Amazon, then I, that's perfect. Yeah, I, you, I'm pretty sure it's still on Amazon. Okay, great. The Mob Boss and the Soul Singer. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, thank you. All right, looking forward to checking it out. Big Bruno fan. Oh, all right, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> So I think I just talked to Chuck Corby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Yeah. Or, or maybe I talked to wow, John talk Russo, about it. Um, who uh, I guess was in Night of the Living Dead. He's the writer, director, and producer of this. Uh, okay, so is is that a better title than Salunatics? I guess it is. Because <laughs> what does it have to do with the Yeah, Salunatics, I'm thinking we're going to get, you know, some cowboys fighting each other. We're going to get some, you know, bottles broken over the head. Uh, so, yeah. I see it right here. With 20 books published $4. internationally in 19 feature movies and worldwide distribution, John Russo, who I think was half in the bag. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> he was at the bar. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. He's been called a living legend. Uh, there's two living legends as part of this. He began by co-authoring the screenplay of for Night of the Living Dead, which has become recognized as a horror classic. His three books on the art and craft of movie making have become bibles of independent production, and one of them, Scare Tactics, won a national award for superior nonfiction. Quentin Tarantino has stated that Russo's books helped them launch their careers. I wish I could call <laughs> Quentin Tarantino right now and be like, <laughs> hey, uh, John Russo, did he? Oh, John Russo. Oh, he, he did, he did uh, Solanitics. <laughs> I love that movie. Uh, well, we, I think we have more Solanitics. Should we watch this clip that seems to be attached? Or... <laughs> oh, sure. Why not? We got nothing yeah. better to do. Let's see. This looks like it just might be the intro for the movie, but we'll see. But I do like the music. <laughs> you know what i really gotta do oh my god if you're listening to wrestling club and you want us to do it we will at some point this summer do a watch yeah. along we'll we'll buy it and we'll we'll view it we'll do an illegal the mob boss of the mob boss and, and the soul suit formerly known as salunatics Oh my God! So that's that's Chuck Corby, as a uh, as a as a kid. Look, this is on Prime Video. <laughs> I can rent this. 
Yeah. We can rent this tonight. One ninety nine. We could buy it. We could buy it. We, no, yeah, we, we gotta, gotta buy it. Buy it. We need, we're gonna re, re, rewatch this thing. <laughs> Why? Well, we're gonna get a lot of mileage out of the mob boss and the yeah. South singer. You know, this just gave wrestling club a new. Man, don't you miss the nineteen sixties? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you miss the 1960s to the early 2000s? Yeah, just, somewhere in between there. <laughs> those kids with those like Caesar haircuts. <laughs> yeah, it was very fashionable in Pittsburgh at the time. Uh, in 1962 or 2002? It's somewhere in between there. <laughs> we'll watch this movie, and uh, we'll return next week with our review of the full thing. Oh my god, great. If you wanna, Thanks if, for giving me hope. Well, if you want to check it out yourself, it's available. If we could give this... You know, John Russo, he's got a big he's got a big tab he's going to owe from the sound of it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that he was just like, yeah, I'm drunk. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> he, I, I thought he said he was driving. No, he's, he 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 was at drunk? the bar, he's like, drunk. <laughs> what time is it? It's 7.30. Yeah, oh my God. Imagine the bar he's drinking at in yeah. Pittsburgh. Oh, hey, you know, God. Pittsburgh's reopening too. Good for them. They probably didn't close as much Maybe. as some others. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is a hard transition to our next segment. <laughs> but we must do it. Uh, you know, we, we do a segment on the show called Light Side of the Ring. And uh, we like to feature, you know, the stuff that Dark Side is maybe afraid to touch because it's a little too nice. So far, we've covered rhinos gardening and lawn care tips. Uh, we've covered the uh, memorable show Bingo Break, which starred Gorilla Monsoon and Karen Tate, who joined us on the show, to tell her about her experiences with Sean Mooney, who she did not remember. And then, uh, <laughs> and then today, you know, we're going for a big topic. Uh, I was lucky enough to stay up until 3 a.m. in the morning and talk to Balianaki and May Saruga of Choco Pro uh, because there's nothing more light and nice in professional wrestling than Choco Pro. So let's take a look, and we'll be back after this with Light Side of the Ring After Dark. Last year alone, around 4.7 million tons of chocolate were produced worldwide. On average, a single piece of chocolate costs around 5 cents. However, across the river from Tokyo's Ichigaya Station, on the world's smallest venue for professional wrestling, Ichigaya Chocolate Square, a morsel of chocolate is a priceless reward for blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> It just kills you mentally and <laughs> kills you your heart or <laughs> how hard you work. In this world, the warriors of Gato Move compete for a worldwide audience, not just for money and fame. And it made a tweet saying like Chocopo is the most brutal promotion in the world. But for a morsel of pride. Chocopo! <laughs> It might be the most easiest thing for a non-wrestling fan to start watching because you don't even have to think of it as a wrestling. Like we, we are not asking you. If we are doing something that is fun to us. And if it's fun to you, then that's all that's it need to be. I don't need to call it anything and you don't need to label it anything either. Uh, we are tag team champion. Yes. <laughs> Joshi wrestling is very intense. It is really is. There's just no fault in it. Yesterday is my third 
anniversary. Boris. Yeah. Congratulations, yes. by and the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, audience, uh, give me a letter. A female friend sent her a letter yesterday, and she said Choco Pro finally was something that she was able to watch Joshi wrestling regularly. <laughs> Yes, Sakura, no joke as a trainer, as a teacher, and no joke as a competitor, as you see. Continuing her decade spanning career throughout promotions including IWA Japan, FMW, and Ice Ribbon, Joshi wrestling legend Emi Sakura co founded Gato Move in Thailand eventually relocating to Japan, where she already had developed a reputation as one of wrestling's finest trainers. What she, who she is and what she teaches and what she favors and what she thinks is like, mm, like all those things influence the people around her. Like everybody influences the people around them, but she is very strong in that part. Business, money, performance, status, wrestler, body, anything and everything. As long as the show is interesting, I mean, Sakura is all for it. Like her decision to make all of Gato moves free, her response to the pandemic created Choco Pro, which would live on YouTube, embracing fan interaction and surviving of crowdfunding and merchandise sales. Audience matters way too much in Choco Pro because it's a live chat. You know, the chat comes up at the same time as the video is going on. So that's like one of our, one of the best thing, one of the most fun thing we do <laughs> after the shows is just read the chats. Hi, this is main event, Lulu Pencil. Could you yes. just explain the, the story of Lulu Pencil? Because that seems to really be the one of the more intriguing arcs of Choco Pro. Lulu is, uh, I think she started getting involved with wrestling when she was 33, I think, 33? Mm -hmm. 32 or 33, I think. She is a very good established freelance writer. She was fascinated by professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. So Lulu Pencil is quite uh, like a tall woman, but she is very weak, like there's just bones in her. So, but Amy Sakura, as you all know, the mad genius, made her a wrestler. Like it's okay if you are weak, you can just find new ways to win. Okay, everyone can join Pencil Ami. Thank you. Beep, 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 beep. Thank you. And it just the name became Pencil Army for some reason. You, we are Pencil Army. Shut yeah. Up. Chris Brooks was Lulu Pencil, and to get the main event, uh, Lulu Pencil put her hat on the line. And he has the cap, I hate to see it! Chris Brooks takes the hat, as he is a jerk, <laughs> and that starts everything. Now she wants to beat him. Before, she was just trying to understand what strength is. Why somebody like Chris Brooks would leave his country, where he's already a star, and come to Japan, leave everything behind, those journeys. Something just, you know, there's like a very weird and unique chemistry between them and they really just got attracted in that sense and has been fighting for like a year now you're not a professional wrestler you are a writer and that's all you're ever gonna be in chris's eyes i think it's ended uh, but i think in lulu's eyes i see like even more brighter fire you can tell to chris brooks i promise I, I, we tweeted this out uh, earlier today or yesterday, I guess. I want to give a big motherfucking shout out to Lulu Pencil and the Pencil Army and the Coco Pro motherfuckers. Are you familiar with Nick Gage? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> it has thrown a very big monkey wrench in the whole equation all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. It's May, three year anniversary, motherfuckers. So we're celebrating. Could there be a chocolate dare uh, square death match in the future? <laughs> May, do you want to? You can do that. I don't mind. Oh, 
Lulu. Maybe Lulu. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe Lulu. No, I don't Let's want that one to happen. It's MDK all motherfucking day. Who would be a dream guest for Choco Pro? Uh, every wrestler's mom. Every wrestler's mom. Starting out with you facing Minoru Suzuki. That's yes. very, uh, you know, uh, yeah. very left Quite field. Dynamic. Yeah, so. Riho and Kenny Omega. I knew you were going to say <laughs> I knew you were going to say I want to watch Lulu Pencil versus Orange Cassidy in the Chocolate Square. That is the thing that yes. needs to happen in yes. this wrestling ether. Well, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out. Uh, congratulations on three years uh, of, of a career. <laughs> It's, you're, it's... <laughs> I know. It's okay. We can talk again, bro. You don't have to say like a super good, nice goodbye to us. It's all no. right. We can talk it's a, again if you it's want a to. It's a true, anytime. true, sincere, uh, <laughs> yeah, from the heart, you know? They says, because we are so small as of right now, thank you very much for you to interview us and ma- making sure that more people can watch us. So thank you very much. It's a genuine appreciation from our side as well. No, arigato. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm yeah. speechless. <laughs> um, Emmy Sakura, a true <laughs> legend. Um, you know, I remember when she first came into AEW and she was doing the Freddie Mercury thing. I was like, I like this, I think, but I feel like there's a lot uh-huh. more you don't know about now kind of seeing her career, you know, going from the mid 90s and then, you know, kind of pushing, just like becoming somebody that just does art for art's sake and wrestling is kind of sometimes hard to find. Uh, especially for such a long tenured career so respect thank you to may who's the future of joshi thank you to bailan uh who's you know he could be the future of uh Paresu. so great great stuff so good great Thanks. job brett love the edit all right so darren your show is now wfmu prime time that's well not quite prime time midnight is midnight on, on a Friday We're a or, after- or, or, or a Saturday, Saturday. On hot, in Hot Girl Summer? Yeah, that's right. Saturday, it's main, Saturday night's main event is now at midnight on WFMU. I'll be spinning records, playing music, getting in Mr. trouble, Saturday night, trying to call you stay now. on the air. Mister Saturday Night is what they do call me now. Uh, so check that out. You can also check out my new theme song, which includes uh, Marty Janetti, Lord Alfred Hayes. And Billy Crystal, maybe? I don't know. I'm not so sure. So check that out. WFMU at midnight, Saturday nights, 91.1 FM in New York and WFMU.org around the world. Yeah. Uh, and I don't yeah. have any plugs, so what, what, what am I going to say? Nothing. Just check out our Instagram, at Wrestling Club WFMU. Our Twitter, at Wrestling underscore Club underscore. If you go to our YouTube page, uh, you've probably seen it. Uh, we've got... Tons of wrestling commercials dating from 1985 to 1999 right. so far. That's right. That's right. Like Wuhan, we're yeah. viral. These these clips. Is that wrong? Should I not say that? I think it's fine. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, um, you, maybe you could say like like Wuhan, we're developed in a lab. Maybe that would be a little bit controversial. We could say or like like AIDS, we're retroviral. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Let's start talking about AIDS. <laughs> Might cut that out. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Right. But yeah, check it out on our YouTube page. Uh, it's 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 great stuff. A uh, fun nostalgia bomb. Uh, they keep getting longer too because there's more, you know, wrestling commercials. Brett, what are you gonna do when you run out of years? I I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm running out of uh, enthusiasm. Probably uh, gonna be around like 2008. <laughs> oh no! And it's just the John Cena. Commercials. It's just John Cena for Gillette. God. <laughs> I'm sure, like Jeff Jarrett's got some uh, local yeah, spots there, in Nashville. You know, they, they, you know, I take it back. There's some some great stuff I've uh, stumbled upon for the 2000s. Uh, so you know, and for some people, that's that's you know the, the prime time. Wrestling fans, it's all it's all about what mattered when you were nine, right? Right, because it's wrestling is a children's television. Mm-hmm. Yeah, children. although you wouldn't know it from these 1999 commercials. 
So, Darren, <laughs> why don't you take us out? All right, that'll do it for Wrestling Club. Thanks for hanging out. Shout out to the man upstairs, Isaiah, who wasn't here, but he'll be back next week. Steve Deaver, the theme song, and the fine folks at WFMU Radio. If you dig Wrestling Club, please like, share, subscribe, give us a five star rating, invite your friends, check out the archive, and spread the word. Wrestling Club will return next Thursday night live on YouTube, so please check it out. But until then, for Brett, I'm Darren. This has been Wrestling Club. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye.